That's the last, we, we say this is the last resort. This means, last resort means I've tried everything else. This is the only thing that's left for me to do. Th this, is also, this is part of why, for instance, part of why I'm leaving, right? My company is very, very successful and they've done some really great things. But part, one of the reasons why I'm leaving to go teach for PYD Japan is because I feel as though we've tried a lot of these things and nothing is changing. And a lot of my coworkers are also going to start leaving this year. And if, if things aren't changing, then we have no choice but to leave for another job. And that's the reason why, that's part of the reason why I'm leaving in June, right? So these are real problems that people face in the workplace every single day, believe it or not. And a lot of people don't know how to deal with them. You know, I mean, some of these seem really obvious. So they say, be patient, don't react, endure, but people forget about this stuff. You know, when you're working really hard and you want to do well at your job, it's really easy to forget some of the really basic lessons that you learn, right? So these are just some of the things that I've learned, you know, as I've seen people go through different jobs, and I myself have changed jobs and things like that. Um, it's one of those things that you really kind of learn over time, that you try to fix the situation, both in the short term and in the long term. And if it doesn't work, your final choice is leaving for another job, right? But, it, but usually, it doesn't get to this point. If you're a hardworking person, if you are doing the right things at work, then you won't ever have to leave. Ultimately, someone is going to come in and make the situation better. In the end, someone will either fire the person who's difficult to work for, or you will find another group to work for inside the same company, right? But ultimately, you can always leave for another job if you feel as though you're, un you're unhappy because of the environment, right? But the most important thing is, you know, don't lose, don't get discouraged. You know, don't lose faith in yourself. Just like we were talking about, it's important to remember confidence, right? It's not your fault. A lot of times, you know, if you're working hard and if you're doing the best that you can, right, it's not your fault. That's someone else's problem. And this is like something that I see a lot in my workplace. I see a lot of groups within the company, a lot of the bosses, a lot of the people are very difficult to work for, right? But it's important, I tell my coworkers that you know, a lot of times don't get discouraged because everyone's working really hard. This is no one's fault. You know, the company is doing well, so you know, use this experience, right? Learn from it, get what you can out of it, right? You're, you're receiving valuable training. When you apply for other companies, they want to hire you because of, oh, you work for that company. That means like, you, know, you must be smart, right? You must be very talented. You must be very dedicated, right? So those are some of the things that you know, we talk about a lot. And this happens in every job, but to different degrees. Right? Some companies are just really, really great to work for. Some companies, people just feel like, um, you know, they feel like they are very appreciated. They feel like the work that they do, that they work for intelligent people who they learn a lot of things from, right? And that they, and that their bosses help them succeed, right? When you when you feel that way, you feel good about your job, and when you feel good about your job, you're never going to want to leave, right? That's the most ideal situation, and a lot of jobs are like that. A lot of companies are like that. But some companies are not as good. And sometimes it depends on the industry as well. Um, but usually, some companies are great at it, and some companies are not so good at it. OK? So you know, once again, I just wanted to share some of these things with you. These are, I think, important lessons that I've learned over the years. And you know, the learning never stops. I think you're always learning something new. These are some of the really important things that I've learned over the years that have helped me a lot as I've been working. In the last sort of segment, I want to see, like, what time is it, Chin? 45. OK. So we got a little bit of time left. So last 10 minutes or so, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you guys about as you guys are studying by yourself. You know, I'm really, really glad. It's been a lot of fun to teach you guys. And it's been, you know, a great honor for me to kind of, you know, you know work with you guys and help you guys. I hope that you guys have learned a lot over the last, you know, couple of weeks. and you guys. Every, every time, I, I always say that when I teach a class, I want them to feel like I'm learning something new. I'm learning a new idea, or I'm learning something I didn't know yesterday. That's always my, my teaching philosophy, right? But what I want to talk to you guys about is, as you guys move forward, and you guys are studying by yourself, or you're taking other classes, or however it is that you're studying English, 
I just want to tell you guys a couple of things, right? The most important thing is reading. Right? Reading is so important. What, whenever you're studying any language, like, like I learned Japanese, right? For me, I try to read everything because that's what helps you expand your vocabulary. The more you read, even if you're reading comic books in English, right? Or if you're just reading like a very basic, even a children's novel, right? You're learning new words. You're learning new phrases, right? You're learning grammar just by reading it, right? Because you're seeing how the words are written, right? So keep reading. Don't ever stop reading. And as you read, keep a list of new words, right? Use dictionaries all the time. You know, you guys are fluent in your language. You're fluent in Korean, you're fluent in Japanese. Always think about, you know, using the dictionaries to understand, right? Like, like understand this expression in Korean, how would I say it in English? And then look for that word. Once you find it in, in English, look for that word in different books. Look for that word in English dictionaries and see. Because in English, one word can have many different meanings, right? So it's important for you guys to do that. When you're reading, like I said, read anything, right? Anything. You can read articles on the Harvard Business Review. You can read articles on The Economist. You can read articles on Yahoo. You can read comic books. I just want you guys to keep reading. That is the most important step in getting better at English, OK? Conversation is fine. But conversation is, what good is conversation if you don't know words? You have to learn words first. You have to understand how to use those words. And then you can do conversation sessions with people who speak English, right? That just helps you practice, right? Conversation is good, but conversation is good practice. You know, if someone, you know, if you're talking to an English speaker, right, and you learn a new word by talking to them, you're going to forget it pretty soon. But if you read that word, right? If you add that add that word to the list, if you use dictionaries to find out what it means, you're going to remember it just because you wrote it down, just because you're looking for that word, or right? you're doing the research. That helps you remember. Conversation is just practice. The conversation is pretty effective, but like it's still it's a chance for you to use words. And that's more for conversation is great for understanding what's the pronunciation, right, for this word, right? That's what conversation is use useful for. And the third is, you know, if you're watching television, right? TV or movies. This isn't bad, but this is more practice for getting used to listening to a language. But the reason why this is not as effective is because, you know, people have different accents. People sometimes use broken English on purpose, right? Just like in dramas, depending on a character, right? So you want to be careful about where you're learning your English from, your phrases, your grammar, your vocabulary, right? Watching TV and movies is great, just practice. But these two are kind of the same. This is practice in speaking, and this is practice in listening. But ultimately, you, your learning happens over here. Your actual learning always happens over here, which is why I always tell people, don't make the mistake of just trying to get a conversation partner or trying to be like, I'm going to watch 10 seasons of the show Friends, or I'm going to watch all of Mel Gibson's movies, right? That isn't going to help. That'll help you a little bit, maybe 10, 15%. But 85% of your learning is going to come from reading. Keep reading. Don't ever stop reading. OK? And there's one last thing that I'm going to tell you guys. And I said this guy to you guys during orientation, and I don't know if you remember. But if you want to become good at a language, you need two things. If you want to become good at anything, you need two things. You need hard work, and you need, you need hard work, and you need dedication. If you want to become good at something, you have to want to be good. You have to challenge yourself every single day, every single time. You have to tell yourself, today I'm going to learn 10 new English words. This week, I'm going to learn 50 new English words. 
and I'm going to spend two weeks just memorizing and practicing them. And I'm going to call up my friends who can speak in English, and I'm going to talk to them. And I'll try to use these words in my conversations. Right? Hard work and dedication. Learning a language is not mathematics. It's not nuclear physics, right? Nuclear physics is really difficult. Mathematics, very high level mathematics is very, very difficult, right? Some people are just naturally talented. But language doesn't require that type of talent. Language requires hard work and dedication. If you're dedicated and if you're willing to spend the time to study, you will get better. And you'll be amazed at how good you can get. You know, a lot of people say things like, oh, you know, I'm too old to learn English. Or like, you know, I should have started when I was five years old. That's bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. The human brain is a plastic material. 